Let's look at the assembly of the geometric backpack. We have our pieces which we've embroidered, and so we have our sides, our front, our other side, and our back. So let's join our pieces. So let's start with our back and join our bottom panel to our middle panel. So we put a pin in on the corner to actually uh, get all the seams lined up and then cross a pin through that pin point. Go to the other corner, point to point, cross pin, and then one in the middle. We're using cork in this uh, backpack, so a little bit hard to actually pin through them uh, when you've got cork. Another method is actually to, is you can actually pin or you can actually lay the seams on top of each other and you eyeball them there. And you are stitching to the left-hand side of the actual original stitching line. So let's join our other base, which is on our front. So we've got our back and we've got our front. Let's open the seam up, give it a good press. Now, optional, you can open the seam up or if it's too bulky, you can actually just leave it sitting one way doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent but sometimes with choosing what a fabric that's a little bit heavier opening the seam up is a little bit hard so what we want to do is we need to actually cut our lining pieces so here we go we've joined our this is our um lower back i think and so we've just laid it onto our lining so it's wrong size together and we're just cutting out the same shape as the outside panels that have been joined. Okay, so we've got our, our lower joined panel. Then we've got our front joined panel, which has got our zip pockets in it. Again, we're just laying wrong sides together. So there we have our, our linings cut for our back and front joined panels. Go. That's what the colour will be on, on the inside. And now we have our side panels. So we've got our zipper pocket. One. Another side panel. Zipper pocket two. We're just lining up with our half inch um, seam allowance that we have originally used on our embroidered blocks. So there we have our extra pieces. And we've got a contrast fabric. So we're going to be doing our upper side lining which is the the fabric one with the buttonholes through it and then we have the other side and then we'll have our front panel which is again the ones with the buttonholes that have been placed in it one two three so the piece we're missing is the zipper pocket we have a zipper pocket actually um uh, for our top of our back lining. We'll be, we'll be doing that next. So we have our lining, our back, but we need to do a zipper pocket for the top of it at the back. So let's hoop up with um, some uh, cutaway stabilizer, do our placement line for our zip, remove our hoop, and we put our zip face up, tape it down on top of the placement lines, and ensuring that your zip is closed and your runner is on the left-hand side. So let's stitch our zip into position. We're using a size three zip, um, which is roughly a three millimeter um, tooth. We don't generally go much bigger than that. Um, if you do want to use a heavier zip, then you need to actually slow your machine down. And if you have to go over the zip, you need to hand wheel over the zip, and you don't want to break needles. So we're placing our piece of fabric on top of our uh, zipper pocket, stitching it down into position. Take our tape off, then we're gonna trim back to our stitching line because this is gonna be a satin stitch on top of our zipper. Just a different method compared to what we normally do, which we normally fold a piece of fabric over. We're gonna lay the, the um, bottom uh, fabric onto below the zipper, stitch around, again trim back, and before we do anything further, we want to turn our hoop over and we want to cut the uh, opening for our zipper pocket. And so when you're using a cutaway stabilizer, it means that you can actually cut away quite successfully 
and then the zipper pocket is open ready for you to use. So we're going to place a piece of um, back liner onto our underside of our pocket. Stitch into position. Then we're just going to take the hoop out again and we're just going to trim back that edge where we trimmed back on the other side at the, at the zipper so as that we can actually do our fancy stitch, whether it be a satin stitch or a decorative stitch or a floral stitch. This row of stitching is going to hold those two pieces of fabric together. And then finally, let's, let's put the, the back onto this pocket. Again, underside of the hoop is up, taping our fabric um, together and it's right sides together, wrong side up and we're going to stitch this into position. Round we go, round we go, place our fancy stitch on the top. Then we want to move our zip into the middle of our pocket and then secure that end. Put a piece of tape over so as that the zip tape doesn't flip up and get caught on the foot. So, Let's just take it out of the hoop, trim back our seam allowances to half an inch, 1.25 centimeters, past the perimeter stitching line. When you deal with the zip stopper, sometimes you need to just be wary where it is. Make sure that it um, doesn't uh, allow you to um, for the ruler to slip while you're cutting. There we go. That's that top pocket, which is the top of the back. That's the back of the backpack. That's the back panel with one with a zipper pocket. So let's join our pieces together. So we, let's start with the side and it's right sides together and we'll pin the seam and then do a half inch seam. Just back tack at the beginning at the end. There we go. Half inch seam, half inch seam. Okay, so let's, we want to join our panels together but we need to open our seams up first. Again, if you had a resisting fabric that didn't like being opened, it's fine to let the seams sit one way, have a one way um, a direction seam, it's fine. So let's lay our, our side panel to our front panel. We're working sideways here at the moment. Pin that seam, to, that, that panel seam together and then go to the machine and stitch our half inch seam. There we go, open that seam up. Join our next one, open that up, and then finally, we're going to place our next panel on, which was our zipper panel, which is our back panel, onto the side panel, pin into position, stitch it with a half inch seam, open the seam up, etc. And then this final seam, which is the other side panel attached to the back zipper panel, pin together, stitch with a half inch seam, very simple. Press that seam out so we make a tube and get that seam flat and then press on top of. Now if that zipper is strong and does not want to sit open, let it sit in one direction, it is fine. Seam on seam, so we've got side panels are on the fold, so our side panels are on the fold, our major panels are flat, seam on seam. We want to find the middle and then we want to leave a gap to turn our our, our backpack through so the um the gap will be about six inches uh measuring that six inches and we were going to stitch from make sure the panel's on panel we'll stitch from the um the folded sides up to our pins and stop so as we can leave a gap Reinforce that, okay, reinforced, and it's just a half inch seam, but we have left a gap at the bottom to pull out our um, backpack through once we have completed it. Right, give that a nice flat iron, and we want to open that folded seam allowance and clip it into the stitching. That will help us when we actually do our box corners. Right, so we're going to pull our, our sides out and that fold seam that we've actually creased with the iron needs to sit behind that open seam allowance which we're measuring now. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark a line so we have using our centre line here, 
we want to mark a line so we've got two inches either side of this middle of the seam allowance. So four inches altogether, and that is going to be our stitching line to create our boxed corner. Boxed corners are quite easy once you once you've done a few. You know, they they are it's a very very simple concept. Any bag. Uh, any square that you sew in uh, as a square at the bottom of a bag can have a box corner by just doing this method. It just changes the dynamic of the of the uh, the bag or the backpack by having a square corner. Things sit better. Trim our seam allowances back to a to a um, well, I'd say a shy half inch or uh, a three eighths of an inch. Okay, discard those. If you want to do any pressing, then you need to press at this stage because you will not get another chance. Okay, there they are lining. So let's lay out our, our outside shell. Okay, we've joined that piece. We've joined that piece. So we need to join our side panels. Pin and pin on the corner, then cross pin. Pin and pin on the corner. It's the nice thing about using the silicon mats is that the pins go straight into them. They stay there. And we want to just stitch this to the left hand side of the original row of perimeter stitching from the embroidery. And there we have it, that's our seam. Now, if you've got a little bit of excess um, stabilizer there because of the pocket there, just trim that out, remove some of that bolt, press that seam flat. But again, if you've got fabrics that do not want to play, let the seam sit one way, it's totally fine. Okay, so we've joined those three panels. Let's so what we've got here is two side panels and the center front panel. So as we're joining the panel, so as all our buttonholes at the top will be in a row. So we are going to okay, join our, our first panel. So buttonholes all at the one end. And again, stitching to the left hand side of our perimeter stitching. There we go. Keeping those seams opened if you are able to open them. There we go. You'll see that we have a short pocket bag on um, these panels. And there is because that when we do our box corners, we don't want the pocket bag to go right to the to the bottom of the bag. Otherwise, you're going to have to go around the corner to get anything out of the pocket. So we've we've shortened the pocket bags back um, um, so as that they don't fall right to that bottom central seam of the backpack because it's senseless having a, such a long pocket and not being able to utilize it. There we go. So stabilizing that, that seam. Make sure you do actually back tack at the beginning and the ends of your seams. The thickness of the zip panel seams there, really they, they are a bit hard if you want to let them sit the way they want to sit and still press that seam open, that's fine. We're going to just cut our buttonholes. This all looks very, very scary. If you want to put a pin at one end to cut with a quick unpick or a seam ripper, then do so. If you want to use buttonhole scissors, do so as well. We're threading our drawstring through our buttonholes at this stage. Check the length of these on, on within the pattern instructions. They can be any length that you want, anything that you desire. Now we're going to put the... Um, the uh, magnetic closure onto our flap so we've measured about an inch and a half up from the point which is well, 3.5 centimeters up from the point and there we have we have the uh, the flat side which will go on the on the um the flat so we have a, a flat side of this closure so we're just cutting a couple of little points there we give this a little bit of a spray so as it will stick into position. Um, it doesn't shift around. It's a little bit easier to, to uh, manoeuvre. Uh, I quite I often use have scraps of iron-on interfacing, but it's not something that we use here very much at Sweet Pea, so we generally use the spray-based and our, our uh, cutaway stabiliser. Cutting some holes for the final little legs of this, and just pushing those open. You can put one of the um, washers on behind there if you wish. They're not essential, but if you wish. And we're looking at that there, one and a half up from that line, 
find our central central position. So we're looking at that's ten inches wide. So we're looking at five inches there. So that's the centre for our our dome. You can put a button here. You can put a magnetic closure. Um, you can do lots of things. It's up to you what you want to do. A toggle. Um, it's what what you want to do. If you're really not sure about the positioning of that, you can leave this second section of the magnetic closure to a little bit later before you put your lining in so as that you can see how much fold over you've got in there. But it's not going to really change. Um, it's, um, it's designed to go, the point is designed to hit that line. We need to make some little tabs to go on the bottom of the side seam uh, so as that we've got something to put the straps to our backpack onto. Now I think they were, I think they were um, three, how much were three and a half inches I think they may have been. Um, check in your notes for this and we're just going to thread them through our plastic D-ring and then we're going to go to the machine and actually tack those together. Um, let's just cut our straps. So basically the remainder is, I think, I can't remember how much it is, I think it could be something like 30, well yes, it's, it's about 33 inches about not as I think it was 90 not about around about 90 centimeters 33 inches um, for our straps again check on your notes uh, to make sure that you've got enough again and, and also it depends on how much length you want to have in the straps we're going to just tack within the seam allowance um, the these um, straps together now these will be the these will be the uh, D ring is at the straps, the backpack straps actually will thread through at the base of the backpack. So we're just closing those together so as that they can um, be uh, more manageable. And then you can see that we're actually just trimming off the ends and then using a flame, just melting the ends of this tape. Now, it depends on what the composite of your, of your, um, webbing is is some webbing is if they're 100 percent cotton they will they will not melt like this so we're looking at three inches up from the the bottom stitching or three and a half from the the bottom seam allowance and we want to just stitch those into position within the seam allowance just take your time doing this and the army says we've got some thicknesses here um every machine is different um and uh, if your machine hesitates going on over this thickness there, then start further in on the webbing and then reverse backwards rather than trying to go on to the height of that webbing. So we're looking at this as being, we've got three, that's in the thirds through there, and we're going to put our straps attaching to the base of, no, this is attaching to the top of the, um, of the back panel because we're going to put our flap on top of this. Those straps are sandwiched in with the flap. Here we have our other, other panels. We want to put a tack in and just keep that the, the drawstring in position. We want to just tack those uh, into the seam allowance again by machine so as they don't fall out while we're stitching. A lot of people will use pins and just keep pins into place in there, but we like to actually tack within our seam allowances because then we know it's secure. It's not going to get caught up on anything else. You don't get injured in the process of working with your bag. Um, and you know that, that their position is quite final. Let's just join our, our last panels. So side seam of our back panel to side seam of our side panel. Corner to corner. And stitching to the left hand side of our original row of stitching. Just making sure that that's centralized because it is just a little bit smaller than the actual panel width. Again, tacking that into position within the seam allowance, not on the seam allowance, within the seam allowance. Okay, so there we have our last seam allowance to be stitched together, our last side seam. And back to the machine.
we're on the home stripe. If you were using fabrics like canvas, etc., and you want a little bit more rugged and a little bit more outdoorsy, you might find that you might want to use a triple stitch when doing your, your panel joins, or if you're using a heavier fabric, you might want, uh, sorry, heavier thread, you might want to um, do double rows of stitching. It's up to you how you wish to secure this. Stitching across the bottom, and so we're going to do exactly the same as what we did with the lining, and we're going to create our box corners. So we're snipping into our seam allowance, our um, stitching on our folded seam allowance there. And that allows that seam allowance to open up without giving you any grief. Centralize that, centralize that seam. And we want to mark in our two inches and two inches. So it's two inches either side. So five centimeters either side of that central line. Just make sure that it is in the central position, otherwise our box corner will be skew. Two and two, and again stitch across, keeping that seam allowance open, and reinforcing back stitching front to, uh, at the beginning of the seam, at the end of the seam. Let's do the uh, let's turn that through and show you. There we have a box corner. Just be aware about where your back your straps are. They can, they can get in the way of stitching sometimes, so just be aware, just know where they are. If you want to actually fold them up and put them into a rubber band or something like that, like a ponytail, then do so, as long as you know where they are. Because they, they, um, you don't want to catch them in a seam, you don't want to cut them off either. Right, push those, if you, again, if you want to do any final underpressing before you actually go further, now is the time to do it because once that lining's in, that will be you won't be able to actually do it successfully. So bag is turned to the right side, and lining is turned inside out, and we're going to slip one inside the other like a satchel, just like an envelope. Tuck our straps in, tuck it, tuck the flap inside, and then pin our seams into position because we're going to sew these two layers together around the top. Now normally around the top of a, of a, a tote bag I usually put a piece of an iron-on interfacing around the top edge of the lining to give it some some fortitude or some some body but because this is a drawstring sort of haven't we, we don't do that on this one but if you felt that it was a little bit limp that, that that double cloth edge without because it's got no um, uh, stabilizer in it or anything, then by all means put some light interfacing around that top edge just for a couple of inches in depth. But it's up to you. Um, you don't want to be interfacing over top of the buttonholes, of course. But but it should it should be stable enough if you've used your what well, we've used um, calico or muslin as our stabiliser. It should, it should be enough, but sometimes if you're doing using quite rugged fabric, these panels will look a little bit lightweight. Just be gentle. It is a fun project, and it's great seeing it come to life. So we're almost there. So what we want to do is just tuck our lining inside and then we want to before going too far let's just sew up our closure at the bottom so we're just using some quilt clips and then we're just going to top stitch the seam closed with the machine doesn't really matter what color thread you're using from there but it's um if you can match it that's good so now we're going to finally tuck that lining in and we want to press our lining just to the inside of that seam and then we're just putting some clips around that edge to hold those edges into place because we're going to top stitch a, a, a casement line when I say a casement line it's, it's, a, it's going to create a tube for the drawstring to run through so the drawstring draws up evenly and um, and the top of the bag looks neat. 
So we're going to do two rows of stitching, one above the buttonholes and one below the buttonholes. So you can use your normal stitching foot, swing your needle to the left hand side to do this row. So we're only going from seam, uh, side seam to side seam of the, of the uh, buttonhole panels. And then swing your needle to the right hand side and stitch just below the buttonholes. So we're making parallel lines and that will be so as that the drawstring can run securely um, through the channel you've just stitched into place. Finally, follow the instructions that came on the packaging with your sets of clips. Some of them have got two bars, some of them have got three bars. It depends on how you wish to do this. So there is our backpack. Quite fun. Mm -hmm.